Humanity Conversation number 79, recorded on September 25th, 2020. It is the 36th recorded conversation with my friend Mike. In this discussion, we made what we both thought was significant progress in clarification of our thoughts and in coming toward agreement. The topic was almost entirely regarding the reasonableness of the concept of solipsism and its relevance to the concept of reality. Um, so where would you like to begin? Well, <clears throat> I think that, that we, uh, I think it would still be useful for us to try to understand uh, why we are not in agreement, what it is that we're not in agreement about and why. Um, that's one thing. Uh, I think another uh, more minor issue is um, uh, the uh, your puzzlement at my saying that definitions are not beliefs. And, um, and then also there's the issue as to um, whether it really is important for us to work on coming to agreement about at least certain things, i.e. those things that make a difference to the, with regard to the quality of our lives and so on. So those are the three issues that I think are, uh, are currently on the table, so to speak. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Um, <clears throat> I, I just think that in terms of us coming to agreement, and I think we should clarify that, in my opinion, what I feel agreement means is, is a, a better described as full agreement. I think we're in agreement about many, many things. I would characterize us to say we're, we're probably in the 80 to 85% category of agreement with most things. And it's just the extent to which we um, we take it is that remaining fifteen to twenty percent. So what I mean by that is I, I think that um, that the part that we're missing here is the extent to which we both believe we we cannot know what's outside our subjective experience differs. I take a much more extreme view on that, that almost really everything can't be known for sure. And you, you say, well, mm, not really. Some of it, a lot more of it can be known than, than what you think, Mike. That's, that's, not, um, that's not an accurate depiction of my viewpoint, which is uh, much closer to, to what you said was yours. Um, uh, but I think there are, uh, there are complicated issues involved um, that that'll, some of this is a set of linguistic problems. Uh, one of the most problematic words that is uh, being used right now in our discussion is the word know or known, K-N-O-W. And uh, that's a very problematic word, you know, like, what does it mean? Yeah. Um, and um, so I, uh, we, we could see, I don't, I, I only use the, that word colloquially. Uh, I don't uh, use it in, um, like when I try to elaborate uh, 
specifically on my belief system and so on, uh, because I think that it's um, it's a word that uh, that usually entails some hidden assumptions and um, uh -huh. or something like that. So. Yeah, well, you know, I, mean, I think we talked a little bit about that before mm -hmm. in terms of, well, what do you mean when you say no? And um, the, uh, you know, I, I, I really, have to th I really want to try not to use a lot of philosophical terms, but uh, I can describe a little bit more what I mean by known. And I'm just going to throw the, the, the technical term out there. It's called qualia. And, but what I mean by that is the, what I mean by known is that can be, um, ex that, that can be experienced inside of your, that can be experienced by your, uh, how, how can I say this? You cannot experience it at all, even inside your subjective experience directly. So cannot be known. That's what I mean by cannot be known. So you're using the word to apply only to qualia uh, it only to um, subjective experience, not to beliefs about it, not to beliefs about subjective experience. Okay, so right. So it, it, when when it comes to beliefs, and um... by the way, do you have a loud clicking uh, noise coming? It's not me. It's him. Oh, oh, it's his breathing. Okay. <laughs> he's, uh, you know, he's still sick. Um, several docs have tried to figure out what's wrong with him, and nobody can figure it out. He's clearly in some kind of pain. And um, I'll tell you, trying to sleep with him when he's like this is quite a challenge. But I apologize. I, you know, we, re we, re yeah. No problem. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to pet him to calm him down, but I unfortunately, I don't think no, that's, that's okay. 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 Um, he's joining in, that's all. Yes, he's joining in. Um, so in, so in terms of, of, of beliefs, um, I, you know, I maintain it, that, you know, beliefs are entirely within the domain of subjective experience and almost by definition, that the implication there is they in no way can reflect what is ac accurately what is outside of your subjective experience. So you can't have a belief that atoms exist? No, you, you can have a belief that atoms exist. But the, the matter is, does that belief, well, I wouldn't simply say it's so black and white. The issue is, to what degree does that belief reflect, and this is very similar to, to your beliefs too, on, on ideas on the subject. To what degree do those beliefs reflect what's outside your subjective experience? That's the issue. And I think I, I take that difference to be much, much more kind of like written in stone in the sense that, you know, you, you cannot uh, know in the sense that I'm talking about anything outside your subjective experience. And this, uh, yeah, but th there's the word no again. Well, and I mean no, you know, no in the way I described it before. There, yeah. There's the word no again. And then there's also a problem, uh, especially for if anybody uh, uh, views our discussion, um, 
the use of um, subjective experience and so on um, because um, in my book on the mind-body problem, which you and I have re read together and so forth, uh, you know what I'm referring to. Uh, and, uh, but I think it's been some time since you've read that. And I know from personal experience that it takes my rereading it to recapture uh, what was uh, um, laid out in that in that chapter, but uh, I mean in that book. But um, uh, the the uh, there there, for instance, subjective experience, as I use the term, and I assume as you're using the term, does not have an alternative called objective experience. In other words, subjective experience is a two-word term for a particular thing that we're referring to. And, um, and that that's um, uh, uh, essentially everything that you experience. Uh, and then you have beliefs about it and uh, beliefs are essentially predictions or sets of predictions. And um, so uh, when you are looking at something, uh, you, are, uh, in, in, uh, you are experiencing it in your subjective experience. You're, you're looking at it, you see it. And then, um, there are some beliefs that you have about that. Um, for instance, that it really does exist and is not an hallucination or a mirage or a dream or something like that. Uh, and then there are other um, uh, <clears throat> beliefs that you have about that. Um, for instance, if you're looking at a lamp, uh, that there are such things as lamps and how they work and so forth. And that, uh, so you have uh, beliefs that are acquired on the basis of your subjective experience, and that's called the subjective model. But growing on the side of that is a set of beliefs that, um, uh, that you're acquiring only because uh, you have uh, learned about things from essentially other people. Um, in other words, you may have a belief about something based upon your own experience, uh, like uh, that store is just around the corner. But then somebody else may say, no, no, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's down the, another block. And um, so what happens is that uh, you begin to acquire a set of beliefs that have been acquired primarily not based upon your subjective experience other than your subjective experience of being told uh, about uh, these things. That becomes the quote objective model uh, in my terminology. And uh, so that's that set of beliefs that uh, one learns uh, <clears throat> uh, that is considered to be more accurate in its ability to produce predictions about a much wider range of things. So formal education, learning about history and learning about science and so forth uh, is uh, adding to a whole set of beliefs and that I refer to as the objective model. So you're, uh, as you're rounding the corner, your belief as to what's going to appear in front of you is a part of your subjective model. And, uh, uh, but your ideas as to uh, what is really there when you're looking at a wall, namely a lot of space with, uh, made of atoms and quarks and so forth, uh, that, that that is part of the objective model. 
and uh, so um, uh, so now getting back to uh, subjective experience, I think when you and I use that term, I think we're using it in the same way. Um, so um, uh, now, uh, and then I clarified about our uh, beliefs about the subjective model. In other words, you learn from your own personal experience certain things, and you learn from other people uh, things that you could not have learned on your own, like what's happening in a distant state or something. Um, and um, uh, okay, so uh, I believe I used the word no or known. Um, uh, again, that uh, has to do with um, what we presume are accurate beliefs, uh, but we recognize that what we think we know right now may turn out to be something that is inaccurate. And we say, well, gosh, I just knew that that was so, but um, uh, now I realize that I was wrong. So uh, uh, what we get to is that um, uh, with any beliefs, um, there is what the belief is, and then there is the, um, the confidence that one has in that belief, and there is the accuracy of the belief. And uh, we find uh, at times that our beliefs are inaccurate. So that's kind of a, uh, a summary of um, uh, sort of the way that I use terms. Uh, or is there anything in that, that where you think that that's not an optimal use of terms? I think it's optimal. I mean, for me to say whether it's optimal or not, that is such a, a um, I don't know what you want to call it. That it's such an all-encompassing orientation to understanding things and yourself that its utility in terms of its being optimal or not, I think really depends on, on kind of circumstance. I, 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 I think certainly one of the things that your, that, that the orientation you just described um, uh, requires, <coughs> and it almost assumes it, is, is the notion of, um, or degree of confidence in something that, that it exists in the things that exist outside your subjective experience. So in terms of it being optimal or not, um, I, can, you, can you repeat that? I, I didn't follow that. In a lot of the, in, 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 let me say it a different way. In, no. in, in, in some of the, th in, in the explanation and the definition you just gave, okay, I would argue that there is, and I think, you know, perhaps rightly so, an assumption that's made regarding the, again, I'm not going to try to use philosophical terms today. There's an assumption being made about the actual existence, that's the wrong word, but for lack of a better word, the actual existence of things outside your subjective experience. And I understand why you're making that assumption. Um, you know, that is, that's not an assumption that I'm comfortable making when we're talking about this level of detail um, about the nature of human existence. Yeah, well, I, I understand we're getting uh, close to the area where I think 
we are um, uh, we, we we are expressing disagreement or cannot say that we fully agree. Um, I think there. Um, what is the uh, so? You're, uh, I think you're saying that I make an assumption that you do not make. And that assumption is that there is, that there is the existence of things outside of my subjective experience. Um, and, um, and that these things can be in some way experienced outside of your subjective experience. Now that made no sense to me using my terminology. Remember? Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. There is no such, there's nothing else beside your subjective experience. So I, and this is where I, right. And we agree with that. That you have to work with, yes, that's right. right. So to a certain degree, I think that there is a, um, conflict or there's something that is um, almost non sequitur ish about what you're saying because on the one hand the uh, the definitions that you just gave regarding your orientations and your beliefs it's imply something outside your subjective experience, but yet definitively there's a claim made that there is, that th the only thing somebody has to work with is their subjective experience. So th th that's um, a perfect example of, um, or rather an example of why, um, you know, I guess maybe a, uh, maybe a little bit of a point, not, to say it's a point of contention is a little bit too strong but it is certainly an example of, of where uh, I'm, you know, in disagreement about. Yeah. Yes. Um, so um, you're driving along and you're kind of going around a curve and you've been that way many times in the past. Uh, before you go around the curve, you kind of know what you're going to be seeing when you get around that curve. Now, before you go around the curve, do you make the assumption that there is nothing other than what you're experiencing? Well, l let me, I I'd like to be a little bit more succinct about your example. Okay. and get a little bit more detail. Okay. I think a more accurate example, it's because here again, I think that, that you're, you're assuming a lot of things here. But I think what's actually happening is that you're getting data, you're getting your, you are, it's qualia. I really would like to use the word qualia here, but I'm not going to. You are, experiencing things inside your subjective experience from your senses as you're going around the, the, the curve. Okay, and you're making this, you're, you're forming beliefs about what your experiences are. And, and that, and, 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 and believing things uh, that will perhaps happen. That's really, I would maintain, if, 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 the, if we maintain the only thing that exists, the only thing that we can know is our subjective experience, then I would argue that's the more accurate way of describing going around the curve. Now, we never talk like that because we all make assumptions that the road exists, the curve exists, the way we experience it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you again use the word no, K N O W. Not, uh, yeah, I, not. 
again, we use those words differently. I'm not using the words no as, as a belief. I'm using the word no, as I described it before, as an experience. To, to, to not to know something in what I'm saying is, does not mean I believe it. It means to experience it. Okay, well, that, that, is, uh, that is one way uh, that the word is indeed used. It's not the most frequent way, but... Uh, uh, I should have used the word experience, and I, I will use the word experience from now on. I'll, well, we I'll, I'll, I'll think about that more in more detail, because I understand you use it differently. Well, I, I'm using the... When I use the word no, when I slip up and use the word no, I'm just using it colloquially and um and it's referring to uh it's referring to one's beliefs that one feels pretty certain about usually um now um a little bit uh differentiated from that but not completely is well i know you uh and what that means is I have a set of beliefs about what you are likely to do and or likely to say and so on. And um, so it's still relating to beliefs. Um, uh, one could also talk about um, trying to think of a, a good uh, example it, it's it's not it, it's not nearly as often used in that way but it's um like um the trouble i've known um so that would be what i have experienced um so uh, in that way, that's beginning to refer, using the word no to refer to experience. But uh, using, using the, the image uh, that I constructed, you're driving along and the road is curved and you've been along the road uh, in the past and you have in your mind what you are going to see when you go around the curve. And the question then is, well, is that what we're talking about? What you will experience? Does that exist before you see it? And um, uh, it is an automatic assumption and belief that we have that yes, it does. So, um, so uh, when we uh, um, when we uh, get up and uh, go and uh, walk into the next room, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, hold on a second, Phil. I have he's driving me crazy. So when we walk into that next room, I think if I give him water, he might calm down. Yeah, he's yeah. very loud. Uh, so we walk when we walk into that next room. Go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, when one walks into the next room, before one has gone in there, uh, one has a set of beliefs about what is in there. And to say that those, what's in there does not exist until one goes in and sees it is not, uh, yeah, go ahead. What do you mean by exist? When you say right. does not exist, what does that mean? Right. And I was going to uh, make reference to that, that we're using the word exist. Um, so um, we know that the word exist really depends upon what it is that we're applying it to. Um, so... Um, well, let me ask you, uh -huh. you just said, well, not we just said, we just agreed that the only thing you can know is, is nothing, only thing there's no, 
the, the, the forget known. I, I use the word again. The only thing there is, there is nothing, there is no opposite to subjective experience. That's the only thing you have to work with. It's the only thing you have to work with. Yes. Now, if that's true, then from, from, from the person's perspective, from the, from the person who's sitting in that car, if something is not inside of their subjective experience for that person in that moment, no, it doesn't exist because he has nothing else to work with. Okay, there. See, those are two different things, what you have to work with and um, what actually exists. And what do you mean by what putting, you have to work with? And you're, and you're putting in uh, for that person uh, so that's, it, it sneaked in there, but uh, that changes things. And that's going to the postmodern uh, idea of, well, what's true for you may not be true for me kind of idea. Well, I, I think it, 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 it's, it's, there, it's the, the assumption that you're making is raising its head again. You're, you're saying on the one hand that the only thing that this person sitting behind the wheel in his car has to work with is their subjective experience has to work with right but then you're saying well yes but something objective does exist well wait a minute but, now we're putting in objective uh, let, let's back up but something the opposite something the opposite of subjective experience exists no, no no it's not the opposite of subjective experience uh, remember our beliefs are our models of quote reality um, and uh, and what our beliefs are are predictions so um, uh, now you're shaking your head you don't agree. I, I almost was going to go like this well you're, I'm just I, it's not that I agree disagree I just think I want to point that you're making another assumption which what that the that the assumption you're making is that which you are predicting is something outside your subjective experience what is actually happening is that you're making predictions about how your sub of what will happen to your subjective experience if I do X. So if I, if I turn the wheel, you're not really able to predict anything outside your subjective experience. What you're doing is I'm going to turn the wheel and I predict that I will subjectively experience X. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's not typically the scenarios that I hear. The scenarios that I hear is that I turn the wheel and I see and and the the and and the I see the absolute the uh, and I see the house somehow outside my subjective experience it's not it's still all in you so you're making predictions about now that how your subjective experience will change no, I, I yeah um I think um, one part of this that may help is, you know, one's subjective experience is not just the sensory and uh, sensory input and its perceptual uh, organization. Um, we also have other things that. Uh, uh, we experience like emotions and so forth, but also imagination. And so we are able to imagine things. And that imagining is a part of our subjective experience. In other words, we subjectively experience the phenomenon that we call the imagining of what is around the curve. So um, 
And that imagination is also uh, a uh, also a belief. It's a prediction that indeed that is what I will experience when I go around the curve. So, um, um, and by the way, when I talk about beliefs, they don't have to be put into words. And you're understanding that. Sure. Like uh, you turn the steering wheel in a particular way, uh, really without even thinking about it, but it's because of your belief as to what the result of that will be. Right. Yeah. But I think, you know, what you just said regarding the imagination, I think strengthens, simply strengthens the case for what you are predicting is simply how your subjective experience will change, not anything outside your subjective experience, or, or at least you can't say that with certainty. <clears throat> Even your imagination happens inside your subjective experience. Okay, but what we're dealing with is the phenomenon of, um, of accurate prediction. In other words, a prediction that turns out to be that which happens as opposed to inaccurate prediction, that which happens uh, that is different than what was predicted. Please define what you mean by accuracy. So I would say, you know, you hear you, I think it's happening again. I think that you're making an assumption here when you say something is accurate, that means that somehow your prediction predicted something that about something outside your subjective experience. Your prediction is just predicting how your subjective experience will change, not okay. anything outside your subjective experience. Okay, but uh, the, there's the question as to whether uh, you are surprised or not, uh, whether what you predicted turns out to be what you um, uh, experience or whether what you predicted turns out to be different. And why does that, that doesn't on the surface, and maybe you can go into this in more detail. Uh -huh. y you can make a prediction about your subjective experience. And if it turns out to be wrong, all that means is that what you were expecting to take place didn't take place. It doesn't in any way imply that there's something outside your subjective experience. No, but, but it's that the prediction was incorrect. Right. All it means is that your prediction was incorrect. Yeah. Well, what does it mean to be incorrect? It means that what you expected to happen did not take place. Right. Okay. So and, you are still and, having an expectation. Go ahead. And, and, and that is one of the most important um, things uh, about our living, any of us. Uh, if uh, when you took that drink just then, you predicted what would happen. You predicted what it would taste like and so forth. And if instead it set your mouth on fire and so forth, uh, that would show that your belief about what was in the cup uh, was inaccurate. Okay. And, and I would say that, that accuracy of belief is uh, that, that attempting to achieve accuracy of belief about things that have to do with the quality of our lives is uh, almost one of the highest level ethical principles that one can have. That, uh, that um, so, so we're saying, yes, go ahead. Okay, I think 
there's an, another assumption made here. So I, I, I would not characterize that by me picking up, up the drink. That's that's what's happening. Okay, so. You wouldn't. No. Okay, so the cup and how it will taste and all my beliefs about it uh -huh. and what and my prediction about what will happen uh -huh. is all only in my subjective experience. Okay, but there is so, a question as to whether it will turn out to be an accurate set of beliefs. Right, so if I, so if I but there's still beliefs about my subjective experience, not about, I'm an, I, I don't know any other way to say this other than to the, it's other than to the philosophical term. You're, you don't have a belief about the ontological reality of the cup. You have, you have a, a belief and a prediction about your subjective experience, not the ontology of the cup. What the ontology you, of the cup is outside your subjective experience. What do you mean the ontology of the cup? What does that mean? The, the nature of the cup's true existence. You can't know that. You can only know, you can only know what the cup is and any prediction about it is in your subjective experience. You, you can only know what the cup is by hearing you. Did I, did I use the word, did I say no? I think so. Okay, I, let me say it again. Sure. Let me say it again. I okay. The ontological nature of this cup cannot be known. You can only know you can, cannot be uh the ontological nature of this cup cannot be experienced. The ontological nature of this cup, you're introducing a word. I don't know any other word. Um, let me try to use it. The, 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 uh, the, the, I think the, I know. the attributes, the, okay, here's a good one. The attribute of this cup that may or may not exist outside your subjective experience cannot be known. What constitutes You're using this, the word yeah. known uh, cannot but, but be. Even, yeah. even leave, okay, leave even it leave in. That aside. See, uh, in the first place, every time you say outside of your subjective experience, uh, you are um you're saying that that can't be known it doesn't ex uh, no i would say it can't doesn't exist that's my point and okay. and i and i and i think that point concert it coincides with yours the only thing we have to work with is our subjective experience in the past 10 minutes up until this point in time you did not have a wife for the for the that's correct. I, I for in inside that that's absolutely. I hate knows? to say, I hate to say I hate to say because it, it sounds so absolutely insane, even when I say it. But when you when I think it through and I've thought this through for months, that seems to be the conclusion. The same conclusion I come to, and it's absolutely it sounds absolutely nuts. But it seems to be, but also the fact that space is curved seems nuts too, but it, it actually seems, if you think it through, you know, I'm not saying I'm right, but if I go through the same arguments that I go through, that seems to be the way <laughs> it is, which is not, it sounds crazy. Well, if it sounds crazy, uh, that would imply that the probability was high that there was something um, non-optimal about the the thinking involved. That yeah, not, and it is correct because we can say to somebody that we think that they're crazy when they can actually turn out to be right. Uh, but uh, but setting all of that aside. Uh, 
how do you arrive at the conclusion that your wife did not exist during the 10 minutes that I uh, referred uh, to? How can, you, how can you arrive at that conclusion? I think it's a, it's a, it's, it's a very complicated chain of thought, but it, it has to do with, let me try to explain it simply. If it is true, I think that we would both agree that the only thing I have to work with is my subjective experience. Uh -huh. Okay. Then that which I am then that well, well, which go ahead. I would say that uh, the only thing we have to work with, and here the to work with, this is a problem, but the only thing we have to work with is our subjective experience and our beliefs about that subjective experience. Which are also inside your subjective experience. Um, that would depend upon what you meant by quote, subjective experience. Um, well, it, but would, now see, what, what you're describing here, what you're describing, namely the subjective experience and beliefs about it, my term for that is subjective model, capitalized in the mind-body problem book. Okay, I, I, I'm familiar with that, but yet, the subject, but, but yet, then you have to then you have to modify the statement that I don't know what the word is epistemic it, it, It's it's your uh, your 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 um. It's really a priori, but I don't want to get into that subjective experience is all, it, 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 or let me say, subjective experience, if, if the only thing you have to work with is subjective experience and your beliefs about the subjective experience are still inside your subjective experience, then to speak in ways that imply your beliefs are somehow separate from your subjective experience seem to be inappropriate. Well, I don't see it as, as independent of, and the reason that I do that, for instance, when you, uh, when you are looking at your cup, uh, you are perceiving your cup, and at the same time, you are believing that the cup is there. So there is no uh, real dividing line uh, between uh, subjective experience and, and belief about it, but on the other hand, one's beliefs about it uh, can become markedly um, uh, outside of or divergent from anything that one experiences. Like you're looking at your cup and you believe your cup is there, but you also believe that it is mostly empty space and that uh, it is occupied, space is occupied by things that uh, we have no um, uh, no way of uh, 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 of um, saying that those things are like something that we have in our subjective experience. Um, when we get into quantum mechanics and, uh, and relativity and so forth, uh, it's uh, we we're finding more and more that. Uh, that our models of the way the world works uh, really turn out to be just mathematical models of um, the relationships between measurements. Yes. Mathematics, we're finding the mathematics reflect the way the world works. I'm sorry? 
I think, did you say that mathematics reflects the way the world works? No, I never said that. Okay, so I thought that's what you said. That's why I stopped you, because that's what I heard. No, Mathematics no. is... Oh, no, no, what I was saying was that uh, our models of reality uh, turn out to, uh, li like we can have, have a model of some aspect of reality and say it is like such and such. But that's, wait, wait. Okay. That it's like such and such. But when we get into more and more detail in the natural sciences, we find out that there's nothing that it's like. That the only way, <clears throat> um, that, that the only kind of model that you can have is not uh, one like billiard balls or something like that, but instead is uh, just a mathematical model. In other words, mathematical equations, uh, the variables of which are measurements. I think that this really highlights a, a big area of difference between the two of us. I think that you are much more willing than I am. And I think you just did it again, which is why I raised my hand. You use the word reality. Mm -hmm. I, I, and it could mean a various, lots of things, but I think in the way that the salient point here is that it means that which is outside your subjective experience. And that's an area where you and I really differ. It's a model. It's a, <clears throat> a model. It's a model of what? Well, let's see. I maintain that what you're saying is that it's a model of something outside your subjective experience. And that's an area where I would question. And that's the big difference between us and our view. Well, for instance, when you are going around that curve and I'm not around it yet, and you have in mind what you're about to see, that's a model of what you're about to see. Ah, okay. That's, I would agree. It is a model of what you are about to see. And that's all it is. It, no, and therefore it is a model of the way things are, even though you're not there to perceive them. That, that's where, I, that's, no, that's, yeah, you that is an assumption that, you, that is an assumption that I maintain. That's no. an assumption that can't be shown. Uh, you, you're maintaining that it's reasonable to assume that there's nothing around the corner until you get around there. I, no, I'm, I, I'm even saying some, something beyond that. That just because, you, just, 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 because, just because you see something, it has nothing to do with, like I say it again, the ontological nature of that thing. All it is, is what you're seeing. Ontological nature, that... I, mean, I know. I don't know. About, I don't know. I can't think of another word. It it, it has it has nothing to do with the. Maybe I could say it, it has nothing to do with the. Uh, it it has nothing to do with anything besides that which what that you that with what you're seeing. Not be, it could, because we say it again. Say it again. I am taking the idea that nothing that the only thing we could work with is our subjective experience to a point which I think you are unwilling to take it. I mean, I'm, I'm taking it, I'm taking it to mean. Wait, wait, wait. Um, when I say, or you say, the only thing we have to work with, that does not make the assumption that there is nothing else. Uh, right, but it, it sh I argue it shouldn't make the assumption that there is something else either. And I would say that, okay, we, we can have those two assumptions, that there uh, is nothing else, or there is, that during that 10 minutes, your wife did exist or during that 10 minutes, your wife didn't exist. When you say exist, you mean exist outside my subjective experience is what you're saying, I'm, I'm assuming. 
Well, that's what you mean by existence. Okay, the, uh, I agree with you that the word exist is problematic because it has different meanings depending upon what it's being used in relationship to. Example, uh, you see in front of you a man and a woman. Okay, you would say the man exists and the woman exists. That's two entities, right? Uh, no, I, I am saying you, you see a man and a woman. The, the, you, you are simply seeing <laughs> what you are defining as or what you believe to be a man and defining as a woman you you are that's all at the level we're talking about in this conversation that's what's happening i'm not willing to make an assumption Wait. Wait. that they have an existence outside of that well i'm saying uh, i'm i'm trying to demonstrate something okay okay you, you see that there's a man that man exists and there's a woman the woman exists and then you learn that they are married. Well, now you see a married couple that exists. Well, all of a sudden, nothing changed, but all of a sudden, something new came into existence. So that uh, use of the word exist is different in that kind of sentence. And so um, when we say, um, that um, uh, that trees exist, we mean something different than democracy exists or disagreement exists and so forth. So the word exist is going to have different meanings uh, depending upon uh, what it is referring to. But there's, but going back to our, uh, uh, I think, the area that, uh, that we seem to be in, sig in significant disagreement about is uh, in that 10 minutes, you would maintain your wife did not exist and I would maintain that she did. Absolutely. I would maintain she did not exist. Yeah, and I would maintain that she did. So I think, you know, it's funny. I was listening to uh, the Cobb's lecture on, on um, I forgot what philosophical point in history it was. I think it was Hobbes. I don't remember who said, you know, with the idea that a tree falling, but nobody's, uh, if a tree falls, what, what does it mean? If a tree falls and nobody's around to hear it, did it really fall? You ever hear of that thing? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like what we're talking about now. If, 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 no one, if, if I am not experiencing it, does it exist? And well, at fir 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 first, I think, let me just make a couple of, of, of uh, points here. You know, if you are maintaining that the only thing that somebody has to work with or anybody has to work with is their subjective experience, then the even the idea of something that is um, of existence being universal in nature is almost a non sequitur. It is not. Uh, I say I can't I can't see how that follows. OK, yes. Let, let's focus on that then. Um, if you are an artist uh, and you have your materials in your house, those materials are all you have to work with. But that doesn't mean that that's all the materials there are in the world. Uh, um, so all you have to work with does not 
is not the same as all that exists. To that, by making that statement, you're doing a couple of things. And mm -hmm. the most egregious thing I think you, that's happening is that you are taking a position that we are, that you are at the same time arguing, maybe not arguing, claiming in a way doesn't, doesn't exist. You're saying on the one hand that the only thing people have to work with is their subjective experience. And then you're coming to a conclusion that rely, and you're making a claim that relies on taking a position outside of anyone's subjective experience. And, but at the same time saying that's the only thing people have to work with. I, I don't think you can do both. The problem here, as I say, is <clears throat> the idea of a uh, thing to work with does not mean the same as what exists. And maybe that's the, then maybe that's another area we're in disagreement about. What does that mean? By to, to, when I when so, when you say subjective experience is all we have to work with, uh -huh. what that means, and when to me, and I would agree. And when I say that term, you know what I mean by that is the only thing one can ever experience ever is one subjective experience. That's it. Now, whether something exists outside of that is unknowable. Now, we include in that subjective experience imagination, right? Memory, imagination, beliefs, uh, no. anything that would be defined as qualia in philosophy. Uh -huh. Well, or... Um, Motivational so states, emotions. Mm -hmm. Eyesight, hearing, smell, taste, everything. So the, so the question is, here you have a set. It's a, a, a set of things. And you calling them qualia or subjective experience and beliefs about subjective experience, imagination, and so on. But you have a set. Is there any um, is there any way of concluding that there cannot be anything outside of that set? I, I think that is the set of all sets. I, I think that's an actual mathematical term. It is the set that encompasses all other sets to infinity. It's the set of all sets. So no one can exist other than you and whomever you're talking to at the moment. Within, that's, that's, as I said before, as insane as that sounds, that appears to be the conclusion. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> it's it, the way things are. It sounds insane and it appears to be a conclusion to you. Exactly. Now, okay. Now, one of the things that we know is, uh, of course, that um, each of us has a different brain that has been programmed by a lifetime of experience, and every person's brain is somewhat different. This is assuming right. there are other brains, which we never see. Um, okay. Um, but um, uh, so it, uh, it turns out that in order to believe something different, new neurological pathways have to open up in the brain and old ones have to undergo somewhat disuse atrophy. In other words, the uh, connections, the synapses. Um, now, of course, all of that could be nonsense. There's no such thing as a brain or synapses and so on, but, but uh, just uh, <clears throat> looking at what modern science has arrived at, uh, it, it looks like that is a good understanding of 
uh, of the brain and of, uh, of the brain of animals and so forth. And so what it means is that when you have been thinking a particular way for a long period of time, it is extremely difficult to think in some other way that is different from that. That's true for me also. So here we have you and me. Um, and um, we have our separate ways of thinking. And the question is, am I failing to uh, be able to make a change in my beliefs? Or are you or are both of us? Um, and that, of course, is one of the values of having this kind of dialogue is to uh, to really see, you know, where we, uh, where we've arrived at. But what, what I'm hearing is from you, well, that's just the way that I have come to believe. And I'm saying, well, that's just the way I have come to believe. Now, the question is, what is the value? And you're saying that when you take a look at yours, it sounds crazy. That would not rule it out by any means. But it, what, it's, what it's saying is, this doesn't sound right. It seems like it's in conflict with some other things that I believe. Well, I would argue I mean, it's certainly in conflict. It's in con definitely in conflict with the... Your no, it, it, it's, it's certainly, well, it is strongly in conflict with the assumptions I've made my whole life about things. I would say that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, that's why it sounds so crazy. And, and I think almost that I think a uh, lots of other people. No. You've been assuming that your wife actually has the life of her own and she's going around doing things, even though you're not thinking about her. Right. And as a matter of fact, the, uh, the shift to this orientation has actually greatly helped our relationship in that it has allowed by abandoning the notion of uh, that there is some absolute way things are outside my subjective experience. I think that certainly helped you know, my, uh, yeah, our, our marriage. Okay. Um, Can I say now, I, I think what you're saying uh, is a reflection of the postmodern solution to the problem that when uh, humans have difference of opinion, they tend to develop anger and to behave in hostile ways. Oh, and no, I, it wasn't that for us, but I'm, wait, I'm familiar wait, with it. Wait, so the, um, uh, and this, that situation that I'm referring to is one where A is certain that A is right, and B is certain that B is right. And if the other person won't go along with oneself, one, the other person is being, quote, unreasonable, and so forth. It gets uh, it gets into that sort of thing, so that people of different opinions very frequently develop anger and host hostility toward each other, and indeed that leads to breakdown of relationships. And so, uh, when uh, in philosophy, uh, <clears throat> it became. Um, accepted that, well, there's no such thing as, um, as uh, absolute truth that can be, uh, that where one knows that one has it. And then the pragmatic view came in of, well, what, what's important is whether the belief works or not. Then the postmodernists came in and said, yeah, and so what works for me may not work for you. So what's real for me may not be real for you. So there's no such thing as 
uh, objective reality. Uh, there's no such thing as uh, objective truth. There's just uh, what's true for you, that's truth. What's true for me, that's truth. So yeah, I, 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 I need to just raise my finger for a minute because you're going on a lot. So I, I think, firstly, you, you, there's an assumption being made, it sounds like, um, this belief system that I have is some, has some kind of utilitarian foundation and, and that's one of the ways which I arrive to it. That's actually not true at all. This is completely independent of anything that happened in my marriage or, or life in general. And that, you know, I, I, I don't think, I think this orientation has some overlaps with postmodernism. Um, yeah, but I, I, this is certainly not postmodern. Th th this goes, this is almost like, uh, you know, Pyrrhonism. It's even beyond solipsism to a certain degree. But anyway, so anyway, I just wanted to point that out. And, and it, 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 you know, this viewpoint, this didn't come from a utilitarian um, foundation. It, it's not like, well, I'm having a lot of, I'm having, it's not, it, it's even when you would characterize a relationships of conflict and arguing that, that's not what I meant by helped our relationship. Uh, My wife and I were experiencing that. Something different. Yeah. But, but, uh, but I'm talking about something that I think is true, and something that has happened, that we humans have had to try to uh, get along with each other, even with difference of opinion. And that's been very, very difficult, but we've made some progress and, and one step along the way is postmodernism. Uh, I don't think that that's the complete answer, but um, um, uh, and, and in other words, there's no, there's no objective truth. Uh, what's true for you may not be true for me and vice versa. So there's no need to discuss it further. That's well, no, 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 no. I mean, I think that's a con that is a conclusion. I think you're, for some reason, taking. I know that is not n the the postmodern conclusion is just because truth is relative means that well, we don't have to talk about anything. I mean, that that's not something that necessarily follows. Yeah, but uh, but I think that the reason that it has helped, the reason that it has come into existence is because it does allow for people to get along even though they have difference of opinion uh, in, uh, better than when uh, they felt that any difference of opinion was, uh, was likely to um, uh, bring about the uh, necessity or desirability of a struggle for dominance, who's going to win. Uh, yeah, well, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think there are natural consequences that follow from somebody's orientation towards life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I could also argue, you know, if you have an orientation similar to that of, you know, the Inquisition or the Crusades had regarding religious beliefs, certain behaviors naturally follow from that. So, I, I, you know, I, I, would, I do support the notion that... Um, a solipsist position has certain utilitarian benefits that don't often follow naturally from other orientations. An empirical orientation, I think, in my opinion, I would claim, naturally leads to more conflict because if something, if you have an orientation to understand it, if you have an orientation of life that there is an idealized truth that exists outside your subjective experience, then therefore it sets up somebody's wrong, somebody's right. I need to help that person because they're wrong. I need to save that person. It, it can lead to a whole bunch, not necessarily, but I think more often, right. um, yeah, that would happen. And, and so the, the alternative <clears throat> is, the, uh, is the, um, the orientation of science. And that is, uh, we are all in this together trying to find out what the most accurate beliefs are about the way the world is. And uh, we all realize that any of us can be mistaken. 
and that we have to look at the data and analyze the data and work on our methods for analyzing the data and so forth. Uh, the rules of evidence, uh, rules of logic and rules of evidence. Right. And yeah, and I, I, there is, I am, I don't believe and I don't maintain the belief or the orientation that any of what I'm claiming in my position about things somehow negates science, reason, logic, or the idea that we are all subject to certain laws, like gravity or whatever you want to call it. Well, I guess what I, what I do maintain, though, is the existence of and the belief in those laws do not reflect anything about anything other than what's happening in someone's subjective experience. Um, uh, is, actually, that's too strong of a statement. You know what? what does about, it necessarily, does, does it necessarily, it doesn't necessarily, it could, it's a possibility that it does. I think there's a strong possibility that it does. What is the speed of light? 186,000 miles per second, roughly in a vacuum. Uh, and that's from your subjective experience? Yes, yeah, certainly. I read it in a book. <laughs> and I saw it on TV. <laughs> okay, so that's, that has to do with the objective model. In other words, it is a model that you have acquired from others, but it is... Um, Still in, in your subjective experience. The reports of it on the part of others, but it is the subjective experiences of others that have led them through their measurements to come up with the speed of light and then report it to you. So you're readily making use of, um, yes. Let's be a little bit more accurate here. Uh -huh. These people do measurements that they're experiencing in their subjective experience. They exist? In their, I said in their subjective experience. That they, those people exist? When I'm thinking about them, for me, sure. I, they, obviously, they exist. I'm talking about them for me right now. Did they, well, let me, let me, let me say, let me, this is a perfect example. Did they exist? These are fictional people. Did they exist before we were talking about them? No. <laughs> so they absolutely did not. Interrupted, that interrupted their experiments pretty badly. <laughs> oh, I see the point you're making here. Right. Well, I mean, this is, that's why it seems so crazy. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, so, say, so let's take this example from my wife again. So, I mean, if, if my wife is not existing, and I'll tell you the, the conclusion that I, that I came to and the answer for this problem in a minute. Yeah. So if my wife doesn't exist when I'm not thinking about them, that kind of assumes that the state in which I left her remains unchanged because, right? So I'm, I, let's see, I saw my wife kind of this, you know, last night or this morning. And the last memory I have her, yeah, she was, she was walking outside the door. So if I leave and I'm not, she doesn't exist, it would, it would come, it would stand to read that when I come home, she's still going to be at the door, right? I mean, and, and, but obviously that's not, that's not true. So I can, I can kind of, I make the assumption, well, she kind of must exist when I'm not thinking about her no. because there's some difference between, you know, those two events that there's change that happens. So on the surface, I agree. And that, 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 that would not necessarily uh, uh, defeat your um, uh, position I think that she did not exist because you're making the assumption that she would have to be exactly where she was in your subjective experience that morning. And But why? Why are you making oh. that assumption? Well, no, 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 no. I, I mean, obviously, that has to do with, with the measurements and can I actually measure, you know, exactly enough and was my memory correct but i mean obviously roughly she's clearly not on the porch right like she's no, why should she be because if if she existed 
if, because if she did not, if she only exists when I am thinking about her, let's say, or she's inside my subjective experience, then it would, it would be a, a reasonable conclusion to make. I think it's reasonable to, to say that, well, if she doesn't exist, then there can't be any change in her state. Why? Because she doesn't exist. Yeah, why? So why then the next time it's just uh, she's a new person? Well, yeah, I mean, that's potentially one answer to, to, the, to the problem, but that's not the answer that I came, that, that I have for it. Yeah. But that seems to be, so then, then the idea is, you know, um, if she's a new person, um, that still somehow maintains that something happened to her. She stopped existing in some kind of way outside of my subjective experience. And that's just not, I just don't think that is a reasonable, it's, there's still some kind of change. But see, you're saying that uh, <clears throat> that it's not reasonable, it's because it's um, different from your assumptions, but your assumptions, I wouldn't make those assumptions. Uh, using your framework, um, if um, uh, if I had a wife and we had identical situations, and I left, um, I, and I was thinking about somebody else the rest of the day, okay, she doesn't exist. Uh, so when I come back, all of a sudden, uh, uh, there. Uh, she is meaning there's this new person who has all of her characteristics and everything. Um, I mean, it's not a position, of course, that I could take. Um, I uh, I think it is um, it's almost an impossible position to actually take. Uh, I would say, in, in anything that you do, you're not going to, uh, when you meet up with this person who claims to be your wife and everything, you're not going to relate to her as if she didn't exist during the day. Uh, well, that, right, that's because you have memories of her. But, but so let me, let me, so the answer that I came to that was I, I reckon- Just because you have memories of her, it's it's uh, you would get into some trouble. <laughs> yeah, but but we're going down. What we are doing right now is the problem that I that I had noticed. The the the, the reason why what we are both doing, and even me asking the question, and me coming, even me recognizing this um, um, what's it called? This contradiction. This um, um, Scott, that's more than the word contradiction. This, uh, yeah, let's call this con this contradiction, this strong contradiction, uh, okay. um, is it, it, that, um, well, if I leave my wife on the porch and I come back and she's sitting at home, if I leave my wife on the porch and she's outside my subjective experience, then the next time I see her, she's at Harris Teeter. So the, the, um, the, the, that's a real contradiction. That's what I mean by that con. That, that seems to be an almost- What is that, contradicting what? It's, it's, a, it's a contradiction that experience that I have inside my subjective experience seems to completely reject the notion that Julia did not exist or my wife did not exist when she was not in my subjective experience because there was change from when I last remembered her, right? So, and I, what you just said is a possibility, but it is not a possibility or a solution to the contradiction that I think is reasonable for several reasons. But what I do think is a reasonable um, 
answer to it is that well, what was it that i said that well when you next time you see julia she's a new person oh uh, okay um and i think that i wouldn't i don't subscribe to that solution to the contradiction for several reasons but um i think the the, the uh, kind of solution that I, that I come to with that is without even, I, I'm, I'm making an assumption that Julia even has some existence outside my subjective experience by even recognizing that contradiction. If the only thing that exists is my subjective experience, then I have to accept that there are things that my, my, that my subjective experience will change and that I will have experiences that I cannot truly explain in any way because I can never step out of my subjective experience. So is it probable that Julia exists? I see, no, but not when I'm not thinking about her. Here's the problem, Bill. <laughs> to even think about whether or not that contradiction is true or false and, can, and has a solution, I have to be thinking about Julia in my subjective conscious, in my subjective experience. It's, 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 it's almost like a misnomer. It's, it's almost, uh, you just, you can't even think about the problem. The problem doesn't exist unless she's in my subjective experience. You follow what I'm saying here? That's the, that's the, ultimate, so that, that's the ultimate explanation for this conundrum that I have. So you, you kind of say, you kind of say this, she's kind of saying, well, did Julia exist outside when you weren't, when she's outside your subjective experience, when you weren't thinking about her? But in order to even ask that question, I have to be thinking about her. What is the conundrum? The conundrum is that if I leave Julia on the porch and then next time I see her in Harris Teeter, doesn't that somehow imply that she had some existence when you're not thinking about her? And my argument response to that is several, but the most devastating one is yes, but in order for me to even think about that problem, I, Julia is existing in my subjective experience. It's, it's, you, you can't even, you can't even form, you can't even think about that contradiction without Julia existing. It's well, axiomatic. It, uh, existing in your- Subjective yeah, experience, correct. There, there is no, there is no issue with regard to whether uh, she exists in your subjective experience. The question is, is there an outside of your subjective experience, something else? There you is, go. Is the, uh, is, That's your, the question. is your subjective experience the only set, an, an all-inclusive set, or is there that set of things which are inside your subjective experience and that set of things that are outside of your subjective experience. Yes, and I absolutely maintain, I think very differently from you, subjective experience is the set of all sets. Yeah, okay, so. This is a very, I just want to, want to, want to, want to just make this point again, it's extremely subtle. You, you can't even, think about that contradiction without thinking about Julie's existence. So one could even ask, does that contradiction um, exist if you're not thinking about it? So can you, can, can it's, um, it, it's, nothing exists for, I maintain at least, nothing exists for us if we're not actually experiencing it, it has it, it. It doesn't even have any meaning, because even to say, even when we're talking about something existing, when we're talking about it, it's in our subjective experience. When we're not talking about it, it's like we can't talk about anything that's not or think about anything that's not in our subjective experience. It's it's impossible. 
How many people exist? I'm thinking about those people right now. No, but how many, that's my point. How many people exist? I have no idea. But, but what's important is that when you said to me, when you formulated that question in your head, does pe do people exist? Those people became, those people existed, so to speak, in your subjective experience. Were brought into existence. Were brought into existence for you in your subjective experience. Oh. Whether they actually exist oh, outside wait, your subjective wait, experience. Wait, see, what happened was you quickly said for, for you. you in your subjective experience and right. I was saying that. Well, but that's, but, but that's, that is. That was not what, the that, that, But that's the, then I, then the question's unanswerable because that, that question I would argue. You're about 7 billion, I think. The, but that, that it's, by that, to, you're, then I would argue you're making an assumption. You're making an assumption that those people exist outside your subjective experience. If, if you ever form a question yes. that whose assumption or that requires existence of something outside your subjective experience, it's an assumption. We could, we could, we can say, you know, yeah, let's assume that's true, but well, that's an assumption. Are there reasonable assumptions and non-reasonable assumptions? Sure, but there's still assumptions. Uh, but there are some that are more reasonable than others, like the assumption that there is a flying spaghetti monster. That's very, very difficult to claim. That there are, <laughs> on what basis would you claim that certain assumptions are more reasonable than others? Oh, uh, by, very definitely by what leads to successful prediction. But why is that um, more valid than, than something else? It's the value of it. That why is the value more valid than something else? Because inaccurate beliefs lead to pain, suffering, disability, and early death. Then why, tragedy. I can keep doing this almost, I can keep asking why, I think you're going to get my point. Well, then why is the avoidance of pain and suffering more valuable than something else? Oh, okay, that's, uh, I'm glad you asked that. Wait, I, but I think wait, wait, I, I can- Wait, 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 All right, I'm go glad ahead. you asked that. <laughs> go ahead. It, um, you're asking me to legitimize uh, my ultimate ethical principle, and I can't do that. It's just something that I want. I want right. as much joy, contentment, and appreciation, and as little pain, suffering, disability, and early death as possible for everyone now and in the future. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, what you just said, I would agree. And, and that is just, that preference exists inside of your subjective experience. Yeah, that's right. And some other people don't have it. Right. Right. So, so there, so there is no actual, I'm just going to use this word. I can't use ontology. There is no actual existence for that belief, the validity of that belief outside of someone's subjective experience. No, wait. The, Holy crap, it's 6.47. I have five minute, uh, uh, I have a five minute warning, 10 minute warning. I, gotta, I really gotta be gone by seven. I should really get sooner, but okay, continue. Well, we're, we're uh, I think we've made a little bit of progress. I think I was about to say the same thing. I think we made, I think this is a great, I think we made a lot of progress this time. Yeah. I would agree. Uh -huh. and, and in doing so, you're the first person well, you're the first person I've ever talked to almost anything like this about, but you're really the first person that I had to articulate that solution to. Of if I leave Julia on the porch and then I see her in Harris Theater, doesn't that contradict the notion of her lack of existence? 
-hmm. And it was really beneficial for me to have to explain that solution mm -hmm. to someone else. And, and also to hear the critiques of it were very important. Uh, but yeah, I, I, think the, I think if I would have to, going back to your questions at the beginning of this discussion of what is it exactly we're disagreeing, I really think we're disagreeing, as I said before, on the degree to which we, we claim that you're subject. What we really disagree on is the meaning of all we have to work with. When we say subjective experience is all we have to work with, I think you and I mean two different things. And, and I don't think so. I think we no? mean the same thing. Hmm. But uh, what I am recalling in this discussion is uh, your position that all we have to work with is all there is, where I would say that all we have to work with is a very limited amount of all there is and that other people have other things to work with and that there's um so that uh uh it's like i'm in agreement with you that we have our subjective experience and our beliefs about it our subjective model but um within that uh we uh our beliefs uh, allow us to predict what our subjective experience is going to be like. And those beliefs can be correct or incorrect. And if they are incorrect, the way of modeling that is to say that there is an objective reality uh, that uh, is in some ways different than our uh, objective, uh, than our model of it. And uh, so all we have are our models, which uh, can be pretty good or pretty bad, whatever, uh, and good or bad having to do with how well they allow us to predict. Uh, but um, right. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, uh, so I think, uh, you yeah, know, we are making some progress and uh, I think we're making a lot of progress, and and yeah. I think that 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 you know, these conversations remain very valuable, and and one of the things I really look forward to during the week. Yeah, me too. It's very yeah. helpful to me uh, to um, to really examine more closely in much greater detail the assumptions that I'm making, and being able to put those into words. Yes, uh, as accurately as possible. I definitely agree. So, um, all right, my friend. So next week, same time. Yes. Oh, Bill, as a matter of fact, no, no, no. I got to take, I got to take my dog to the doctor next week. Can you do 530 next week? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, good. I will see you at 530 then. Until then, be well. You too. Bye-bye, Bill. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Much better we can.